Welcome, NCLEX High Yielders. This is Dr. Zishan, and I'm the host of NCLEX High Yield Podcast, where we will be giving out daily content for your exam, tips and tricks that the boards love to ask, and overall general information on how to study, what to study, and complex topics broken down for you. Whether you're a first-time test taker or even a repeat test taker, we have helped people across the globe pass their NCLEX exam, so do not give up and get motivated. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast and also visit our Instagram at NCLEX High Yield, at NCLEX High Yield, where you can DM us questions so we can answer them on the podcast. Also, check out our website, www.nclexhighyield.com, and subscribe to receive a link to our weekly free Zoom session. Free Zoom session where I drop all types of content, break down complex topics, and make them easy for you to understand every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys then. Take care. All right, now getting into the juicy stuff. Let's get into infectious disease and antibiotics. With the antibiotics, I tell students this all the time, the way that they're going to ask antibiotic questions or pharmacology questions is they love the side effects. They're one of the four types of questions I talk about. Freebies, 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 freebies. Either you know it or you don't. Farm are easy questions if you know what you're talking about. What I'm going to start off with is the influenza vaccine. Vaccines, man, people struggle with them big time. So I wanted to clarify one that's super, super high yield, and that's the influenza vaccine. So we've got two types of influenza vaccine that you need to know for the exam. The first one is your intramuscular one. This is just your shot. The other one is your intranasal. The intranasal is the one that I'm going to start with. The intranasal influenza vaccine is a live attenuated vaccine. What do I mean by that? We actually give the patient a live version in a low dose, a very low dose in order for them to build up Antibodies. Remember, we talked about that last week. I was like, hey, I'm Dr. Zishan. If I was influenza negative and I was exposed to influenza, I'm going to build up antibodies. So one way we can do that is give them a live version, a live version. And that's the intranasal one. The problem with this is it's contraindicated in a lot of different patients. This is where the boards love asking you about. So what are we going to look at? We're going to look at anybody that's immunocompromised. Immunocompromised is a very broad term. Who's immunocompromised? What is the idea or what is the definition of immunocompromised? Anybody where their immune system is compromised. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. People like HIV patients, people with chronic medical conditions. How about COPD? How about congestive heart failure? How about chronic kidney disease? These people are compromised. They are more susceptible to getting sick. And if they get sick, they have a harder time fighting it off. They're not in their optimal condition. Pregnancy. You guys talked about pregnancy. Chemotherapy, radiation therapy, immunosuppressants. And we're going to talk about those specific ones that Angelica just named. These people are immunocompromised, this whole array of patients. And then also patients less than two years old because their immune system is not fully developed. People greater than 49. So when we're given the intranasal one, we're looking for a specific group, two years to 49 years, that are healthy and they do not have an egg allergy. With any vaccine, with any vaccine, whether it's, you know, Tdap, influenza, pneumovax, whatever it is, there are multiple different parts to that vaccine. If there are multiple parts to that vaccine, if any one of those components causes an allergic reaction, it is now contraindicated. So for instance, in the influenza vaccine, we have egg. The amount of egg in there is minimal, is minimal. However, because there is an association with egg allergy and anaphylaxis, the component of this vaccine being the egg can cause anaphylaxis. So if you have an allergic reaction or anaphylactic reaction to any of the components, we're going to contraindicate that for future reference. The intramuscular, with the intramuscular influenza vaccine, everyone gets it, starting at six months. Everyone. 
especially in the ones that we just talked about, the immunocompromised people. So look at that. In the intranasal, the live one, we are not giving it to the immunocompromised. However, in the intramuscular, which is a killed version, a version that is not live, we are now going to give this to everyone, especially our immunocompromised people. This is going to prevent them from getting something that can make them severely ill. When we give these vaccines, I am, how are the boards going to ask? They're going to ask you which patients select all that apply should receive the killed version. And that's going to be, they're going to put an elderly patient up there that's 80 years old. They're going to throw a pregnant lady in there. They're going to throw an HIV patient in there. Select all that apply. Everyone above six months, especially, especially immunocompromised. With the live version, on the flip side, they're going to ask you which one of these is contraindicated. Immunocompromised. You see how they can do that? So know the difference between the two because this is an easy question if you're able to differentiate the intranasal versus the IM. IM does have egg components as well too, yes. What happens in, in real life, if you have an egg allergy, we always ask, and this is, this is general for the boards, how about this, know this for the boards. If you have an allergic reaction to anything, medication, vaccines, you're gonna ask the patient what their allergic reaction was. If it was a mild rash, who cares? Who cares? If it was, I got an itchy throat and I felt like my tongue was swelling and I, I, like, I got these hives all over me and felt like my throat was closing in. All right, now we're not doing it. Now we're not doing it. That means that this person is going to have an anaphylactic reaction the next time. Remember, people need to be exposed to something before they can have a true anaphylactic reaction. Nuts, eggs, penicillin, things that cause anaphylaxis. So the first time you get exposed to it, it's like, oh my goodness, I was itching. I felt like I was swollen. All right, now we know next time we're not doing this. What we'll do in real life is a person that gets an influenza vaccine, especially a child, we're going to do it in a medical setting and we're going to monitor them for at least 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. For instance, if you guys were here last week, you guys got to meet my, my beautiful little niece and she has an egg allergy, but we went and got her flu vaccine and I made sure that she didn't have any type of anaphylaxis. I talked to her, made sure any itching in the throat, you know, say, ah, and obviously being in the medical field, it was a little bit of ease for my sister, even though she's a PA, but it's one of those things that you want to make sure that they don't have it because it's very scary, especially with children. Hey guys, Dr. Zishan here. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys could kindly subscribe, leave us some stars, whatever you think it's worth and leave us a review. We always want to get better for you guys and want to keep putting out this free content for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one. See you on the next podcast.